My name's Kim McCall. We've been farming here since 1958 when my father bought the farm. The farm is Calverstown here at Kildare. It's a soccer farm with some sheep, a nice bit of forestry and an awful lot of trees. All, all, through, the, all through the farm, uh, a lot of new hedgerows planted in the last number of years. Uh, it's all old pasture, a uh, certain amount of ponds. It's a whole mixture of habitats and integrated into that is a soccer cow enterprise of pedigree Albrechts. This is another 25 acre field, but I've decided to, to split it into three, three lots of eight acres each, which for my size of herd works very well. They're in it for three days, then they move on to the next one for three days and so on. They rotate around the farm on anywhere between an 18 and a 30, 30 day rotation, depending on the size, time of the year. I would leave the field green if possible. I do not want to leave the field white because it takes it much longer to recover. Uh, I'm more interested in the top of the growth rather than the bottom of the growth. So if I leave it when there's at least five, six, seven, even 10 centimeters of grass on it, that gives me a blade of grass to photosynthesize and collect the sunshine and away we go. My stocking rate is probably not as high as some, but it's higher than others. It's just around average. It's about one, somewhere between 1 1.3, 1 1.4 uh, livestock units per hectare. Uh, and that's in a organic system. I think the animals have to be happy if they're getting a diverse sward with diverse things to, to, to eat. And also the fields are diverse, so they can get into shelter, they can get into out of the rain, out of the sun, in the sun, however they wish, uh, dry lies. It's, it's all about diversity, not just in, in, in um, a word, but it has to be in action as well. Farming of manure is, is, um, comes out of the sheds when all the cows are left, generally the first week of April. It goes into the dungstead, left there for about two or three weeks, and then is turned again with a, a Volvo uh, loader, turned well uh, to, to get it to reheat up, get it to compost, and then it would be spread then in June, July, when the ground conditions are good and firm and possibly hay has been taken off the fields where it goes. It's spread lightly. We put on no more than four, four tonne to the acre, less if possible. So it's really just a dusting. Uh, I don't want to blacken the fields. The farmyard manure is not only straw and, and, and cow manure, it's, it's wood chip uh, stroke tree surgeon waste. Uh, it's got, got a lot of leaves in it. So I'm trying to increase the fungal load in the farmyard manure and that goes out onto the pastures. Most pastures are uh, bacterially dominated. So by adding more fungal uh, components, as in the compost, you get closer to a 50% uh, bacteria, 50% fungal load. It's uh, again, goes into the farm air manure. We'll add, it's a mixture of carbon and nitrogen. The leaves will be nitrogen, the carbon will be the wood. It's chipped fairly small, so it breaks down quickly. Um, you're adding to the fungal load in your, in your paddocks by putting it on. Uh, I gave up topping about four years ago, five years ago. I don't top at all now. First of all, I always have grass. It's good for the clovers, it's good for the insects because where the dung pats are, you get the clover flowering. So you've got the various bees, butterflies, would go to the flowers around the dung pad and they'll eat it on maybe the second or third rotation afterwards. Plus anything goes to seed, I get this free reseed as well. The interesting thing about using your own seed and letting it doing it itself is um, the seed has memory in it. It's memory from the mother plant. And as the mother plant is already here, it has all the memory of droughts, it has rains, it has how, how it's managed. And so it's really in tune with the ground, 
with the, with the, with the field. So it's, it's truly native. But this, this would be one of my pastures that are, is really very old, um, but it's got no new rye grasses in it. It's got, uh, last year I did a, a count. Uh, it was a high summer count, so I could see what was flowering and so on. I got between 16 and 17 different um, species in it, between grasses, herbs, legumes, um, a lot of Coxford in this. Uh, dandelion, yes, buttercup, yes, but everything in moderation, but nothing, nothing bad. And everything that is here is probably doing a job. I mean, the docks would be breaking up comp uh, compaction and still the cows graze them and still I won't top. Um, I'll always have grass in this field. There's red clover, there's white clover, there's black medic, there's sorrel, Coxfoot ryegrass, native ryegrass. Murder fox tail, Yorkshire fog, crested dog's tail, they're all there um, and they all, or they all have their purposes and the cows would selectively graze whatever they need to. This is a low input farm, no fertilizers, very little additives used, no doses, no sprays, even though I'm organic I, I didn't use it for uh, the last 10 years. And I feel that is a cost saving. It's also a cost saving in, in time. You don't have to keep getting the animals in. And also it's a cost saving in less veterinary fees, less inputs holistically, such the cows can self-medicate on the, on the grazing. So if you take all the positives in not buying, you then are a seller rather than a price taker. Any of the services that I required on the farm, it's all done by contractors. So they have the latest kit, they come in, do it quick and gone. Uh, so I pay by the hour. Um, so th that would be my inputs in other people's services. The farm is managed holistically. It has to be a benefit to everybody and everything. Uh, so nothing really takes precedence. It's totally holistic. It's the farmer and the family are in charge. Uh, after that, it's the grassland followed by cows and integrated into all of that is the, the, the wildlife. Insects, birds, mammals, trees, shrubs, butterflies, the works, amphibians. Uh, and it's a pleasure to go around at any time of the year and you could see things that you haven't seen before or, or things you, you should see all the time, like owls, kestrels, buzzards, they're all there. Plus, if they're there, the predators are there, then the prey is there as well. And that's, that's the important thing. You're going to have one without the other. You're not going to learn everything in the one day and mistakes, mistakes are, can be turned to learning processes. It takes a long time to work out how to farm like this. But once you've got it, you've got it. It's enjoyable because you're always seeing new things, you're always doing new things. It doesn't mean you're static, it doesn't mean you're backward. It means that you are learning all the time. Healthy farm, healthy farm or healthy stock, it has to be good.